Please stand as you're able and we'll sing together Joy Comes with the Dawn, number 166 in Voices United. May the peace of Christ be with you. you. Welcome. Welcome to Trinity United Church here in Port Coquitlam. We're so great to see so many faces this morning. We see new faces and we see faces that we haven't seen in a while. We're very happy to have you with us. Trinity seeks to be a brave space where diverse people's opinions and practices are welcome. We welcome people from all walks of life. Gay, straight, bi, trans, young, old, from whatever continent or hemisphere your ancestors originate, you are welcome here. We're glad that you're with us. We gather to follow the way of Christ. Christ welcomed, healed, fed, taught, and liberated everyone. We gather to learn how to take better care of one another. We gather knowing that some of our ancestors hurt the ancestors of others in this space. We gather to live differently, to reconcile, to make new, and to support one another into a better future. We gather to know and to proclaim the love of Christ that knows no boundaries. We gather to companion one another into a new heaven and a new earth promised of old. So welcome in spirit, in person, online. We are grateful that you are with us. The land on which Trinity United Church in Port Coquitlam lives and works has been occupied for thousands of years. It was traditionally occupied and cared for by the Coast Salish peoples, the Coquitlam First Nations. Colonial laws and practices continue to oppress and exploit indigenous peoples and land. Our acknowledgement of unceded traditional territory is a first step in reconciliation and decolonization. We commit ourselves to education and transformed thinking and practices 
that foster healthier relationships with all our neighbors. We invite those of you who are following us on YouTube to check out our website at ucpoco.ca and to like and share our services. Those buttons are in the description box below the video. I invite you to take a deep breath and let it go. And take another deep breath and let it go. And one more time, take a deep breath and let it go. Let us prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Christ is risen. risen indeed. Christ is risen. risen indeed. Christ is risen. risen indeed. Let us pray together. God of Easter celebration, gather us in. Gather us in to witness the mystery. Gather us in to know resurrection. Gather us in to proclaim good news. Gather us in to become the living body of wonder, joy, and new life. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together Jesus Christ is Risen Today, number 155 in Voices United. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
So let's see how it goes. <laughs> Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Christ is risen. Thanks be to God. So it is year B in the lectionary. So we are hearing the story this week from uh, the gospel of Mark. This is how Mark tells the story of Easter morning. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome, bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. 
As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified. He has been raised. He's not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And that's the story according to Mark. I would invite our, our reader up this morning. It is Jennifer is going to read for us. We will sing the refrain twice, and then we will join Jennifer in the responsive reading. of Aaron say, God has loved you forever. Let those who fear God say, God has loved you forever. Hallelujah, hallelujah. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. There are shouts of joy and The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God did his deep punishment, but did not give me over to death. to me the gates of the temple that I may enter and give thanks to God. <clears throat> this is the gate of God. Through it, the righteous shall enter. I thank you, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. <clears throat> the reading today is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, and I am reading verses 1 to 11. Now I should remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas and then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all of the apostles. Last of all, 
As to someone untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the house of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. This is the witness of the early church. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able, and we'll sing together, Hey Now, Singing Hallelujah, number 121, in more voices. Let us pray. Open our eyes and soften our hearts, O God, through the work of your Holy Spirit, that in the hearing of your word we may receive new life. Amen. 
someone in the Corinthian community has asserted, there is no resurrection of the dead. It's a pretty reasonable statement. Dead corpses don't suddenly reanimate. Stories about zombies belong in the fiction section of the bookstore or library. For those who have not experienced the resurrected Christ, the statement, there is no resurrection of the dead, is a perfectly reasonable statement. If we start with the impossible, there's nowhere else to go. If we start with the impossible, there's nowhere else to go. There is nothing we can do about the climate crisis. There will always be war and violence along the Gaza Strip. We will never be able to feed all the hungry people in the world. I will never be able to forgive you for that terrible thing you did. Reconciliation between native and non-native people will never happen. This week, we have been living at the intersection of the housing crisis and the drug crisis here in the Lower Mainland. Our every effort to alleviate the housing crisis is obstructed by the drug crisis. And our efforts to alleviate the drug crisis is obstructed by the housing crisis. A solution is impossible if we start with the impossible, there is nowhere else to go. Paul will assert that if we start with the impossible, the dead don't rise, then nothing we have lived will make sense. Paul wants us to return to the good news. Christ died for our sins, Christ was buried, Christ was raised on the third day, and Christ appeared to Peter, Cephas, to the twelve, to the five hundred plus brothers and sisters, to James and all the apostles, and finally, lastly, to Paul. Now, I'm going to quickly point out here that this is an expression of two-tier Christology, those who were listening last week. Jesus was really human, and he died really died. If Jesus wasn't human and didn't really die, then there wasn't really a sacrifice and there can be no miracle. So Christ died, was buried and raised on the third day and appeared to Peter and the 12 and the 500 plus brothers and sisters to James and all the apostles and finally, lastly, to Paul. If we start with the impossible, the dead don't rise. What do we do with all these witnesses? Witnesses who, for Paul, were still alive. Go and ask them for yourselves, Paul writes. Living people, your neighbors, your friends, have had this experience, he points out. We don't have descriptions of how Jesus rose from the dead. And we have no explanation of how Jesus rose from the dead. What we have is testimony of hundreds of people who witnessed the living Christ. We have stories of the people experiencing the living Christ. Paul lists himself last as one untimely born and briefly recounts the familiar story of how he persecuted the followers of Jesus until the resurrected Christ appeared to him. And now he is a humble servant of the resurrected Christ. Now the expression untimely born means stillbirth. Paul is asserting that he was born dead but the resurrected Christ has appeared to him, and now he is alive. Paul points out, you knew me before when I persecuted 
the followers of Christ. And you know me now as a servant of Christ. Paul asserts that you've seen this change. You are your own witnesses. I believe that many of us know this kind of change in our lives. One of our hymns states that I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. <coughs> Most of us in what used to be called the mainline church were born into the community of faith. We were baptized as infants or small children. I was an older child myself. So we don't really identify with Paul's experience of coming to Jesus or that moment of conversion of before we had Jesus in our lives and after we had Jesus in our lives. And if we do, we probably don't express it the way that it's being expressed here. But I do think that we can imagine our younger selves before our eyes were open or before we experienced healing or renewal or before we felt empowered or even truly loved, when perhaps compared to now, we only felt half made. I know that when I think back to myself as a young adult before I came out of the closet, before I found my empowerment in education and training, before I did therapy and spiritual direction, I was a very different person and frankly, my dreams were small. I have now been and done and experienced things that my 20-year-old self thought impossible. I grieved the death of my young cousin and found joy again. I came out of the closet. I reconciled with my dad before he died. I became a minister, the last thing in the world I wanted to be. And I love my calling. I have been seen, both the good in me and the bad in me, I have been loved, both the good and the bad in me. And I have been empowered to make a difference in people's lives and in the world. These things for me were impossible to my 20 year old self. I hope that as I narrate some of my own story, you're hearing some of your story here. Despite the fact that the dead don't rise, we know the resurrection because what was impossible has been made possible. I have watched parents grieving the death of a child return to healing and joy. I've witnessed bigots and homophobes become ardent defenders of queer rights. I have witnessed wife beaters repent and become loving, attentive husbands and fathers. I have witnessed impossible acts of forgiveness and reconciliation and generosity in a reasonable world. These things are impossible. But in God's reign, Nothing is impossible. We are enlightened. We are reconciled. We are made new. We are our own witnesses. And we witness one another when we share our journeys with one another. Over the years here at Trinity, I have watched you hurt and heal. I have watched your doubting participation become curious anticipation. I've watched your cautious engagement become faithful commitment. We witness the living Christ daily among us. And those of us who have witnessed the foolishness of the cross, the impossible 
happening must proclaim it in our words and in our actions. When we're feeling lost and overwhelmed, Paul reminds us to return to the basics. Christ is risen. The dead become living. God makes possible in us the impossible. As we enter into the Easter season, it is a whole season, not just today. We've got another 70 days of Easter ahead of us. May we each witness the living Christ, and may we proclaim the living Christ with our words and our actions. Amen. Previously, we call these a minute for mission. We now call them Silvis stories. The story today is called An Easter Message on Education. Thank you for empowering mission and service partners in all forms of education. Over the past few months, we have shared stories 
centered on traditional and non-traditional education. <clears throat> Mission and service recognizes the profound connection between the resurrection story and the transformative potential of education. This Easter, we pause to think of great sacrifices and miracles. Just as Jesus emerged from the tomb, defeating death and showing us that we can be raised to new life, education opens the mind, dispels ignorance, and fosters a deeper understanding of Christ's teaching and compassion. Mission and Service, in its commitment to education, seeks to empower each partner to be a beacon of knowledge and compassion in the world. With your support, we engage in mutual learning, seeking opportunity, opportunities to grow our understanding of the world through the eyes of our partners. Thank you for empowering mission and service partners in all forms of education. Blessings for Easter. There are many ways to participate in the ministry of Trinity United Church. If you would like to make a financial contribution, please place cash or a check in an envelope in the collection plate at the front door of the church before the service and at the front of the church following the service, immediately following the service. You can also give on pre-authorized remittance or you can click on the Donate Now button on our website at ucpoco.ca. Let us show our gratitude by bringing forth our offering and sharing in communion. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing together, Let Us Talents and Tongues Employ, number 468 in Voices United. It doesn't matter how great your faith is or how small. It doesn't matter if this is the first time that you've been to church or if you've been here every day of the week this week. You are welcome to this table. We're uh, going to be receiving communion. That means we'll ask you to come up and hold your hands out. And uh, somebody will place the bread in your hands. And then you ingest it immediately. And they will place a cup in your hands. And you'll ingest that immediately and place the cup down in the trays that are on either side of uh, the front here. 
If uh, you are unable to make the trip up to the front, just let the usher know and we'll make sure that com somebody comes to serve you uh, once everybody else has been met. If you uh, need gluten-free bread, just say so. Gluten-free is available in the tray. Let us begin our prayer. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks and praise. It is right to give our thanks and praise. In every time and age, O oh God, it is good and faithful that we give you thanks. For your mercy is sure, and your steadfast love endures forever. In your compassion, you gave us Jesus Christ, who frees us from darkness and lights our path to endless renewal and life eternal. And so with all of creation, with all the needy and the hungry ones, with all those who have enough and plenty, with creatures large and small, with sun and moon and stars, and with the saints of every age, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. designs of evil, show the way through the wilderness, turn hardship into righteousness, and reveal your hand, upholding the just. Blessed are you, O Christ, servant of the universe. You came among us to feed and heal and teach, to confound the haughty, to confuse the tricksters, to challenge the wrong-hearted, and in all these things to give hope to those who long for peace. We remember that on the night he was betrayed, having gathered with his friends at table, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks for it, saying, and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup. And gave thanks for it. And shared it with his friends saying, this is the cup of the new covenant. Poured out for you and all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Remembering our Lord's self-giving love, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is Blessed are you, O Spirit, giver of life. You give us words when we have none. You fill us with vision when we have the most need. You give us voice to proclaim our faith in every hour. Be our guide and teacher today and always. Come now, O Prince of Peace, Spirit of Love, Breath of Life. Bring to all this hurting world the joy that Mary knew, and teach us to proclaim with her, I have seen the Lord. In the unity of the Trinity, in gratitude for this great day of resurrection, we praise you, God of all that is, 
now and forever. Amen. And now we turn to you as a child turns to her mother, seeking affirmation and comfort, praying the words that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of the day bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Would the servers please come forward? The gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
Please join with me in the prayer after communion. God of new and eternal life, we thank you that in this meal we have witnessed and received the living Christ. Nourish us with this food that we may see the face of Christ more clearly in our friends and neighbors. Have the courage and faith to proclaim our faith and be the children of light you call us to be. May our eyes bear your glory, our lips speak your word, and our hands work your justice. In the name of the blessed stranger who accompanies us on the journey, we pray. Amen. Please stand as you are able and we'll sing our closing hymn, Thine is the Glory, number 173 in Voices United.